Don't you know I'm the big bear With my claws all sharp I like honey And salmon could be a good start And when the winter gets cold I go into my cave I got a really nice family And a lot of fur I'm on my way. Hi, everybody. I have a uh, salad show, hopefully, for you guys tonight. It's going to be about personal finances because I'm starting to be, I'm starting to have my mind blown about all this stuff that people aren't taught in school, myself included. Like, there's so many things that I took for granted is like true that I'm learning not to be true and all this stuff that we weren't taught and all that. And so I wanted to go back to like, the extreme basics that school intentionally doesn't teach kids for obvious reasons. And I was lucky enough to, to be taught by my parents and my culture. You know, people talk about white privilege. The only privilege is having married parents and, um, you know, a stay-at-home mom and, a, and parents that can teach you how to manage your money and uh, how to not, um, you know, go into debt. Because I think it's important that people handle their house, put their home in order, put their finances in order. That way they can have families. That way it's better for not having depression. Um, it makes us a stronger people. And so I feel like, you know, for all the rabbit holes you stick with me as we go down about like pyramids and stuff, I get to do that because... Um, I'm lucky enough to already know a lot about finance. I'm just going to talk about the real basics that can be night and day for your finances. And because um, that's how people control you. Think about how many kids are so much more susceptible to the lies of socialism because of college debt that won't render valuable for a job at all or credit card debt or any of these debts. And, um, you know, like the subprime mortgage situation that happened in 2007, I'll explain that as well because that's fascinating. And it helps people really understand what um, just the basic, simple things they can do uh, to, to make sure that they're not that vulnerable. And like right, like right now, I'm blessed enough to have um, some cash. And now I see a currency that I want to uh, build up are my skills because my skills are very lacking. There's so many currencies, time, health, community, skills, knowledge, you know, uh, physical strength, mental strength, resistance to pain. You know, money is, is almost like time. It's like frozen time, or as Mike Tyson called it, it's paper blood, you know, because he's referring to uh, war. But uh, it's, it, it, it's very helpful. And debt is, um, is a form of slavery, slave debt. You know, because my, my family came here to America in the early 1700s as they were called indentured servants, which is basically just a PC term for slaves. But you would get in an unpayable debt and it would take generations to pay it back. And in that time, you were owned um, by, by people. And, you know, say what you will about the Jews, but just like the Koreans and some parts of India and... Uh, you know, one type of Chinese person. There's there's certain groups in the world that are unbelievably good with money. And I hate to say it because they say it for me over and over and over and over again. But when people have had some real hard times and um, they're kicked out of their homeland, you know, I'm not placing, I don't know if the people had a point or not at the time. I don't, I don't know. But like, Jews knew that they had to have like gold, silver, um, hard currencies in order to be able to transplant themselves where they needed to. And same with uh, uh, certain types of Koreans and, and stuff like that. So it really is a cultural thing. Is the stream is the stream good? Buffering? You guys good? How much of that did you guys miss? Was it right when I was talking about the Jews? Did the Jews shut me down? Because my dad is, is like a money uh, master. Buffering? Did you, what did you guys miss? Did you miss, did you miss the Jew part? Uh, let me refresh mine. Because my grandmother was a Jew. 
And so my father is a professor and they, um, you know, now I think he makes pretty good money. But for most of my childhood, we were considered below the poverty line because my mother um, and it, the greatest thing that anyone's ever chosen to do in my life was my mother uh, choosing to be a stay at home mom, even with my dad only making twelve thousand dollars a year. And my dad wasn't too pumped at the time because he's, he was half Jewish and, and wanted that coin. But my mom, um, that saved that that literally saved me and my brother that she did that. And that we had a mom for, for all the good times and bad times of our lives. The fact that our mom chose us over money and we just, uh, you know, had a, a thrift, thrift clothes and, and one car and, um, you know, never went on trips or anything like that. Uh, you know, co-ops for food and all that. It was the best thing ever. But we, we were very low on money. But my dad is like a wizard. Man, Oh, before we get started, shout out to uh, Vox Day. I've been really enjoying our friendship and our back and forth with the streams because, like, he's he's just such a really uh, good guy and a great thinker. And, and when I was talking about the wizard stuff, he uh, he did a whole stream yesterday called, um, or was it today? He did it today about uh, can there be a good wizard? And I love that. For all the negatives of the internet, it allows people to be executioners with no, you know, they, they cover their face and get to be cruel psychopaths but for all the negative there's real positives to it and it's like you know if, if, if you know how to avoid hero worship and and just craziness and you just get to see people's ideas and go back and forth across just unbelievable amount of uh distance it's really really great and uh, i wanted to plug one of vox's books because this is one of the things that drew me to him early because you know vox has has been slandered and there's so much propaganda around him being a this like Nazi racist guy, which is all total horseshit. And the one thing early on that let me know without question, he had a good heart and then it was confirmed over time. But, uh, he, one of the books that, uh, they published was called, um, I wrote it down to make sure I got it right. It was called, uh, the Last Closet, and you can get it at arkhavencomics.com, and it was the story of this woman who was horribly abused and her, her struggle to get out of it. And they call these acts unspeakable, and I'm a, a firm believer in speaking them because that's the only way uh, to stop it. And I think right now the embodiment of evil in the world is child abuse because it, it's uh, – it's, it's, so widespread and so damaging and so evil that when I see someone take the time to, to publish someone's story and, and this hero, this woman, you know, survives it. And, and I guess I haven't read it yet, but like I've, uh, people have told me they've read it and that uh, there's parts that are just you'll cry with, with horror, but it gives people hope that she got through it. She's now like a, she plays the harp and she's a cool person and stuff, but that is so important. And so many people don't speak for the defenseless. You know, so many people, I think about all the people out there that have been abused and just wish someone had said something when they were kids, you know, all the silence, you know, one thing, like, I love the phrase, um, listen for the dog that isn't barking for all this stuff that people go on and on about, about solving the world through, getting rid of the wage gap and getting more money. If you notice how many people are focused on money, where money can be chains, but money will never set you free. Money can put you in slavery if you're bad with it. That's why I'm going to give you some tools tonight. But it doesn't set you free. Like people that think that if you just keep pouring money into these broken communities, you know, like the black community didn't used to have the crime rate it has. That's why I don't get on board with a lot of the race stuff that some people say, because in the 1940s, the black crime rate was similar to the Italian crime rate in, in most major cities. And now, of course, it's psychotically high because the family was broken. And they want to do that to, to whites, and they're doing it to whites, you know, except instead of crack, we have heroin and fentanyl. And um, they figured out a way to break us, you know, because uh, true evil doesn't see color. That's the irony. The real evil isn't racist. They they hate all of us, and um, 
And so I want to talk about finance, but I want to give uh, Vox a shout out because I've really uh, enjoyed our friendship. And uh, I like the back and forth that we can have with streams and stuff. And because that's what makes the Internet great. You can combine ideas and learn from each other. And, you know, he gave me a good compliment that uh, uh, that that because me and him are both very like high IQ individuals. And I'll get to the, why I said that in a second. It actually gets to the whole point of why I'm doing this podcast because someone almost made a horrible financial decision. But um, he is uh, not as good at, as me as far as uh, like the emotional side of communication and the way I could describe uh, wizardry, you know, the dark side of rhetoric. And, uh, and he's not a hater. He's the guy that's like, oh, that's awesome that you can do that. I've never been very good at that. And for me, it's, I'm not good at a lot of the left brain things that he can do, like, like mapping out stories with that type of precision, you know, and, um, and another thing that we bonded over was the, the, the children's fantasy books that I was read are the, are ones that he really likes. I'd never know, known anyone that had, uh, read, uh, the dark is rising series by Susan Cooper. And cause fantasy is a real weird genre. It can either be just full of like pedophile weirdos and, uh, nihilistic justifications for just disgusting nonsense or it can be a beautiful way to transfer awesome knowledge about good and evil and like i loved uh my mom would read to me um you know tolkien and uh lewis and all these people that had a firm knowledge of good and evil and christianity uh and dark is rising and uh and and that allowed me it allowed to shape my psyche and my soul to, uh, to good and evil without being able to handle the Bible when I was that young. You know, that, that's why I still prefer children's Bibles. Because it's the ideas, it's the stories. And no, I'm not saying it's archetypal. I'm not Jordan Peterson. It's real. But it's like the vernacular is not my strength in the Bible. Like the, 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 the way they speak and, the, and the, 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 how condensed sentences are is not my... my my, my uh, specialty, my specialty in understanding is the bigger picture, the, you know, the truth in the, in the way it's said. And that was one of the things that he talked about, whether or not there's good wizards or bad wizards. It's, it's all, wizardry is all bad. Rhetoric is, a, is the bigger umbrella of wizardry. Wizardry is to manipulate, to say things, to get people to do your will. And whether or not you think it's good or bad doesn't matter to me. It's the same fallacy as socialism. It's like, well, if I was in charge, I could set up this economy so everyone's thriving. Everyone thinks that. That's why I don't trust myself to do that type of stuff because I'm really good at it. It's all about consensual wizardry, I guess. We might need a new word for it, but like, like when people come to a comedy show or someone goes to Magic Castle, they're like, do some dazzling stuff for me. And that's fine. But like, like when they're watching the moon landing, they're not, they don't want someone to be tricking them. That's when things get weird, right? And I exaggerate to clarify. Like I, I'll do, like, like make America great again is a great form of rhetoric. That isn't wizardry. It's a way to say words that evoke an emotion that is what he's talking about. And then I'm with her from Hillary Clinton was all wizardry. They set up this whole thing with this false feminism nonsense. And the whole thing is structured around being a plus one to a party. Like it's, it's all cuck. Make America great again. It empowers the person. Make America, your nation, great. It allows you to, to, to decide what great is. That open-endedness of it makes it so powerful. Because some people that don't understand rhetoric uh, get hyper-specific. You know, like I know people that, that speak in just pure logos and very high detail where it's like, make America be fiscally responsible and less likely to go into foreign wars. Like no one's going to repeat that. Make you, America, here, great. Again, again, is, is a, uh, a throwback to tradition. And it means that it's, it's something that we once had that we can have again. See, that isn't wizardry because it's the truth. It's what we want. It isn't like this, uh, these made up words like racist or homophobe or, or anti-Semitism. It's all, those are all nonsense trickery words. That's, that's to get someone to do your will without any truth in it. And I, I just found that, that, that whole thing fascinating on his, on his, um, 
his stream. And so what made me really want to do this financial stream was I was reading the comments yesterday and thank you all for commenting on yesterday's stream because I learned a lot from it. And when people, you know, talk shit, I just, I just, I kick them out now. And I, a lot of people have told me the chat is much more enjoyable now that I've become border patrol with ice. I'm like, no, you're not, you're not welcome here. The hell out of here. And, uh, this one guy,